Hi, I'm Bethany Gabbard, and this is a tutorial produced for the Chemeketa Writing Center. And today we're going to talk about plagiarism and what you can do to avoid it. We're also going to talk a little bit about the campus's academic honesty policy and what that means for your research papers. Now, most of us never set out to plagiarize. We want to document our sources adequately. And most plagiarism that we see on campus is the accidental kind. And so we're going to talk a lot today about what you can do to avoid those accidental instances of plagiarism. First, let's talk a little bit about the campus's academic honesty policy. You can find a copy of that at the link that I'm going to include in the presentation, and that's on the campus's website. And for the English department, what that means is Students at Chemeketa Community College are expected to practice academic honesty by not cheating, plagiarizing, or misrepresenting their coursework in any way. Students are ultimately responsible for understanding and avoiding academic dishonesty, whether such instances are intentional or unintentional and violations may result in the failure of the assignment or failure of the course. Now, at the Writing Center, we really want to help you to understand that. One of the things that we can do when we're working one-on-one -on -one with you is to help you make sure that you're not plagiarizing. And again, you're responsible whether it's accidental or not accidental. And let's look and see, well, how do they define plagiarism? What does that mean to plagiarize something? And on campus here, plagiarism is defined as presenting someone else's words, ideas, artistry, product, or data as your own. What that means, really in practical terms, is that you have not adequately put citation in your paper so that we can tell what is coming from a source and what is coming from you. And so that's the key, is are you documenting your sources, whether it's APA or MLA or Chicago or some other style of documentation, are you documenting your sources so that we can tell what's coming from you and what's coming from the source. And that means that each and every instance where information came from a source that you didn't know prior to sitting down to write that research paper, each and every instance needs to be cited. And so what I always tell students is I tell students that if you didn't know it before you sat down to write the research paper, before you started taking the class, it's going to need a citation. We don't just cite quotes and we don't only cite at the end of a document. Whether you're an APA, MLA, or some other format, you must cite each individual instance that comes from a source. Now, what does that really mean in terms of getting started? You can avoid plagiarism before you ever sit down and start writing by how you do your research. Organize your sources well. By that, I mean either print out hard copies or if you're emailing sources to yourself, keep track of what's coming from what source. When in doubt, so when you're in Academic One file or another database you're collecting your research on. You'll see here the little PDF link, or if you just click on the article title, you'll see right here that you can view it as a PDF. If you're going to save it, save it from the PDF. Now, if you're going to email it to yourself, which you can do just by clicking the email button, and it will ask you, do you want to email the full text to yourself? select PDF because that's going to give you the author's name and that's going to give you the most information possible. You can also select full text and that will show you just what's on your screen here. But what you can do too is message to your, is include a little message to yourself about how you think you're going to use that source. But however you're keeping track of your sources, if you are printing them out, you can put numbers on the top of each source. So if you have the PDF here, you can put a number at the top of the source so you keep track of your sources in your note taking. The other thing is if you're doing it all on your computer, is you can have 
a document open that you're taking notes into. And what I've done right here is I've selected a piece of information that I think is going to is going to help my paper. So I've selected that information. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to paraphrase it or if I'm going to quote it in the body of my paper. That's not important yet right now. What is important though is if I'm hitting copy, if I'm going to put that in my notes, I need to use quotation marks in my outline right here. I've got the quotation marks in my outline so that I know that I'm quoting at this point. Even if later on I'm going to put it in my own words, in my notes, I'm using quotations because I've cut and copied right into my notes. Same thing if I'm taking it by hand. I'm going to highlight or use the quotation marks so that I know that this is the actual words of that author. Because it's really easy in the note-taking stage to lose track of what's your words and what's the author's words. So what I've done here is I have a little outline going for myself. And this is topic one, topic two, topic three, and any information I think I'm going to need for the rebuttal. And so I'm just taking notes from my sources right into this document using quotation marks when I'm copying and pasting so that I don't forget that this right now is a quote, even if later on I put it in my own words. The other thing I've done is right away at this point, I've put an MLA style citation, or if I was an APA, I put an APA style citation in at this point so that I can then go back and I can see, okay, this quote came from the Peters article. I have no doubt what information came from which article. So that is key. Organize your sources, keeping good notes, citing often and accurately in your notes when you can, take notes in your own words. If you're in the PDF, you printed it out and you have it in front of you. You can take notes in the margin in your own words, practicing putting information in your own words that you know you're going to put in the paper. The other thing that I like to do is have two colors of highlighters. Yellow is the places that I think I will quote word for word, and pink is the places I think I will try and put the information in my own words. That way, later on, when I'm going to start my draft, I can go through and I can pull those quotes pretty quickly. I also then have that reminder to myself that this is information I want to include, but I better put it in my own words. So always giving yourself enough time to include citation is a part of it. If you've included citation in your notes, though, you're not going to have a problem with this because you'll have the citation right there in your notes. A big common error I see students doing is they don't include citation in their notes and they don't include citation in their rough draft. And when I sit down to help them in the writing center, what they tell me is, well, I'm going to add citation later. I'm going to add citation at the end. That's a problem because then you may have 10 different PDFs to file back through. And so you have to look through, and did it come from the Peters article? Then you may have to even go back to your search. Did it come from the Schmuck article? Did it come from the Medical Economics article? I don't know. So, But if you've taken good notes, you've got it right there in your outline what source it came from. In fact, if I want to, I can just pick it up from my outline, and I've already got the quote marks, and I've got the citation, so I can just pick it right up, and I can take it to my document, and I can put it at the spot that I'm going to need it, and oops, it doesn't look exactly right. I'm going to go here to control, and I'm going to have use the destination, use, so I'm going to use our destination formatting. All right, so I got the formatting looking correct. I pasted it in, and what I ended up doing was hitting Merge Formatting. And so I've got the quote. It's got quotation marks, and it's got the citation, and all I'm missing right here is a period. And so I'm ready to go. It came straight from my outline, 
and I already had the source. So I didn't have to pull back and pull up the Peters article. I had it all in my notes ready to go with the citation, saving me a lot of time. Now, what if, though, I wanted to put it in my own words, or I didn't have those quotation marks here? Even though I have the citation, this would be plagiarizing because I don't have the quotation marks. If it's word for word from the source, it needs quotation marks. Now, another frequent type of plagiarizing we see is people take away the, the quotation marks and they go in and they say, okay, I want this to be a paraphrase. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to change a few words. I'm going to change partnership to effort. And I'm going to change physician to doctor. And I'm going to change perspective to view. So I've changed three or four words here. This isn't enough to avoid the plagiarism. This isn't really paraphrasing. Paraphrasing means you put the whole idea in your own words. It's not just changing a word or two. This would still be plagiarizing because I don't have quotation marks here. Even though I've added citation, I'm plagiarizing because I've only changed a word or two. If I'm going to remove those quotation marks, I better put the whole thing in my own words, changing more than just a word or two, changing the wording and the cadence of the whole thing into my own words, my own point of view. That's the key. So, when in doubt, we're going to use those quotation marks. We're going to be clear, though, that even when we are paraphrasing, say I had managed to put this all into my own words, still going to attribute it to Peters because I learned that information in Peters. The citation is not just for quotation. The citation is for any bit of information you learned from Peters' article. Any little bit of information gets a citation. Even if in the very next sentence I have more information coming from Peters, I'm going to put a citation right here with this sentence. So each little bit of information gets a citation. Now, say I'm not sure. This is a pretty long quote. Do I need to handle it like a block quote? I've got other tutorials coming about handling block quotes. The important thing in your rough draft, though, is to get the quote marks in there. You can worry about formatting in subsequent drafts. When you clean up your draft, you can worry about asking us questions about how do you handle an article with multiple authors like the Peters article. You can handle the block quote later. You want to make sure in your rough draft, though, you have quotations when you're pulling information directly from the source and that you've cited even your paraphrases with your parentheticals. Each bit of information gets a parenthetical citation, whether you're an MLA or APA. You're going to include the citation with each bit. Don't wait till the end of the paragraph. Don't wait till the end of the paper. Even if everything in that paragraph is coming from Peters, you still need a citation with each sentence or each quotation that's, a, that's information that came from Peters. That's the important part, is it's got to be each piece. Not citing frequently enough is the number one error we see in the Writing Center is students are waiting till the end of the paragraph to cite, or they're waiting to the end of the paper, or they've included a work cited page, but they don't have any parenthetical or in-text citations. At that point, they're already violating the academic honesty policy because they don't have adequate in-text citation. Each bit of information needs a citation to avoid conflict with the academic honesty policy. And that's going to be true at Chemeketa, it's going to be true at OSU, it's going to be true in graduate school. Wherever you're working with academic papers, you need to do a citation with each bit of information. So I talked about grabbing information from the article. Now what about our information that I grab from a website? Like say I want to include the academic honesty policy right here. 
I want this statement. And so I'm selecting it. I'm going to put it either in my outline or I'm going to put it directly into my paper. And I'm going to select to merge my formatting. I'm going to make sure I've got quotation marks. And then even though it's a website, I'm going to put the title of the article, which is Academic Honesty Definitions, in MLA format here. And you can see other tutorials for how we do that in APA. But the key thing here is even though it's from a website and not an article, I still included my citation. I included it the best I could. It doesn't have a physical human author, but it uh, uh, an author I can name. But it does have an article title. I'm going to get that in. I can later refine my works cited page, make sure that that is the article title. But in my drafting, I'm making sure and getting a citation in there. I don't want to just do something ugly like this. Even in my rough draft, I wouldn't want to just plunk that URL right in there. Because that's not good citation, and you're, and you're going to end up spending a lot of time later on. So even in my rough draft, I'm getting citation in there in the parenthetical format that I'm going to want later on, whether it's from an article, whether it's from a website. And in this case, even though the information may be just general background information, if it comes from a website, if I didn't know it prior to writing the paper, it's going to need a citation. Now the other thing that you can do to enhance your understanding of plagiarism is make sure that you're balancing your quotes with enough discussion. So as you can see here, I have two quotes back to back. I've got the Peters quote and I've got the academic honesty quote. What I would really like to do is have a sentence in between here in my own words. My own great thoughts and discussion of Peters before moving on. So I'm going to include my own thoughts in between the two quotes. Because if your whole paper is quote, 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 even if you have great citation, you're not bringing in enough of your own thoughts in your own discussion. The other thing that I see students do is when they realize that they're doing that, that they have quote, 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 they have cite, 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 they start removing some citations so that it doesn't look like everything came from the sources. That would be plagiarism. That would be a violation of the academic honesty. Because if every bit of information came from that source, then every sentence needs a citation. It's not enough to just remove citation so that it looks like more is from you. No, it's got to be your own thoughts and ideas in between the quotations, in between the paraphrases. That's what adds the discussion. So if you look at your paper and you think, oh, I've got a citation, a citation, a citation, this is too many citations. No, you have plenty of citations. What you need is more of you, which is going to get the paper longer, which a lot of times is what you want. So you're not going to remove citation. You're just going to insert more of you in, and that's what you want. When in doubt, always use your manual. For writing classes here at Chemeketa, you're going to use your little seagull manual. Until we adopt a different one, it'll be the little seagull. The other thing that you can do to help yourself avoid plagiarism is, like I said, you can do the notes, write in your notes, put your sources in, coming back to what I was doing in my outline. The other thing I can do is I can include my Works Cited page. I don't have to wait till the end of my paper to include my Works Cited page. I can just go right here. I can hit Enter. So even if I have just a blank document at this point, say all I have is my name, my title, I've got my basic MLA format set up here. But all I have to have is that, and I can just go here. I can go to Insert Page Break. And look, it gave me a new page, and I'm going to put this centered, just like I will on my final thing. Going to go and put Works Cited, 
And if I was an APA, I'd label it references, but I'm an MLA right now. And I just start my citation right there. Now, if I'm over here at the academic one file, I can actually come down here to where it says source citation. And of course, I'm going to want to double check this. Always double check it in my little Siegel manual to make sure that this citation is the correct format wanted by my instructor. And if you're an APA, this one won't work. You'll need to adjust it just slightly to fit APA. But so coming back here, and again, I'm going to hit under here, I'm going to merge my formatting, and that's not correct. I'm going to come here, going to get my hanging indent. So even though I haven't finished typing my paper yet, I've got the Peters citation on my Works Cited page. I know that it's been included. And then when I come to another quote from Peters, I can remember, oh yes, my parenthetical is just going to be Peters et al. So that is kind of how I keep myself going, is I build this Works Cited page at the same time that I'm writing my draft. I don't wait till the end to include my Works Cited page. I build it source by source as I'm writing my draft. And I can even make my Works Cited page at the point that all I've got is notes. I could make my Works Cited page from my note-taking stage onward and then just go back and add the main paper. That's a great strategy, too, to make sure that you've got those citations in there. But just to reiterate for you, it's not enough. It's not going to be enough to have just the Works Cited page. I need both the Works Cited page and my citation right here. So I've got both. I've got my citation right here, and I've got the matching place on my Works Cited page. And obviously on your document you won't use Highlight. But I'm showing you that I have it both in my document and on my Works Cited page. Notice too that even though I used the web for my research, in neither spot did I just plunk the URL down. Just including a URL is not enough to avoid academic honesty issues because you need to use your system, either APA or MLA, you need to include the information that that system wants you to, which for both MLA and APA is going to be more than just a URL. Now it can seem overwhelming when this is your first research paper. The key thing to keep in mind is that most students have great intentions. You don't want to plagiarize. And if you take good notes and you take good care when you're making your rough draft to include citation, you're not going to have a problem with the academic honesty policy. You run into problems when you take sloppy notes or when you're cutting and pasting and you forget what came from what source. Take the extra two or three minutes to include a citation as you cut and copy so that you never run into that problem. And again, even if you think you're going to later go back and put it in your own words, use quotation marks in your outlines and in your note taking so until you do that so that you don't wind up with a situation of wondering, is this in Peter's words or is this in my words? You want to make sure that you've got it in your notes correctly as a quotation so that you don't run into problems where you forget what's you and what's the source. And we've all been there. And so the key thing, too, to remember is that that's what we're here for in the Campus Writing Center. We can help you if you have a question. Did I put this in my own words enough? Did I change enough of this? Am I balancing quotes enough with discussion? That's something that we can absolutely help you with in the Writing Center. You can also always ask your, your instructor, or you can use your manual. That helps you as well. 
So I hope this tutor tutorial has helped you today with understanding how you can avoid plagiarism through taking good notes, organizing your sources, citing often and accurately throughout your paper each and every bit of information that you didn't know prior to sitting down to write that paper needs a citation. And so if you're doing that, you're going to be just fine with the academic honesty policy. And if there's any further questions you have, that's what we're here for is to help you in the Writing Center. Thank you so much.